While in our very city there lives a unicorn of all the queen that ho Asset Archives Diaries. Um, I'm attempting to start a new series that I hope all kinds of people will jump on. And it's to feature a record from the Asset Archives. This a very important book for record collectors that focuses on primarily psychedelic and private press and um, out there music, sort of underground music, real people music, just the private press, hard rock, prog, folk, you name it, all of the sort of more um, underground music that was going on in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, the Ultimate Guide to Underground Sounds, 1965 to 1982. If you don't know this book, it's highly, highly recommended you find it. There are different editions. Patrick Lundborg is the author who did pass away a few years ago. Um, there are, I think there's a recent imprint uh, edition, but um, the idea of this is to, yeah, for everyone out there, whoever wants to do it, is to join in and take a video to feature one record uh, from this archives, and it's huge. Now you have things that have major label releases, you know, like, um, you know, major label psych releases will be in here. The leaves are in here. Um, and then there's all kinds of incredibly rare private press things. There's things that are pretty common. It's primarily written by Lundborg. And he's got two contributors, Aaron Malinsky and Ron Moore. The system they give for, like, the rarity number. Um, and they all have different, they have differing opinions on them. Some entries are written by this two different people. Um, and I won't get too far into the, um, you know, what the definitions are behind these things. You really should check it out. But, um, there's many things that are not included. Um, well, maybe I can read real quick. This sort of like, the Asset Archives is not a psychedelic discography. Classic psychedelia makes up less than 10% of our entries. However, due to the open-minded nature of most psych fans, psychedelia has proven a good vantage point from which to explore the unknown and unusual. This book features data and reviews from more than 4,000 obscure LPs from the USA and Canada. It is mainly a North American thing. There's, I think, a little bit of international, but the vast majority of our entries could be categorized as private or local releases, meaning self-financed projects with very limited distribution. Um, over here it says, why isn't my favorite LP included? If the paragraphs above fail to explain why, here's a few more possibilities. It's too famous, it's from the late 80s, it's a surf LP, it's a mainstream major label rock, FM rock album, it's too new agey, it's too ethnic world beat, it's a jazz LP, it's from Great Britain, it sells for $10, it never came out, it's too arty, it's early 60s folk boom. There's more things, it's from Australia, it's pure funk, it's swinging soul, it never appeared on vinyl, it's a modern day hoax. <laughs> It's too top 40, it's a bargain bin exploitation LP, it's gospel, it's pure lounge, it only exists as an acetate, it's a, it's a spoken word fine art album, it was only released in Uruguay. Those are things why it wouldn't be included. Otherwise, you have all kinds of things with pictures, and I mean, I probably have, I don't know, I have hundreds of records in this. Now I want this series to be Hopefully you have original pressings of these. Some of these are too rare for that. If you have a reissue, I'm gonna probably feature a reissue at times. But I just figured this is a good way to break up the sort of cycle of doing these VC videos, is to sort of dive into the collection and talk about some of the Asset Archives records, because they're always really interesting. So, I'll make a playlist if anyone wants to feature one. There's tons of you people out there who could do this. Dylan Noble Records, Psychedelic, uh, uh, Jonas Sublime Media, um, 
lots of you could do a video on this. Chris Cole. <laughs> I'm sure Stunty has stuff in this. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's probably an LP on here uh, that you have. It's in this book. And if you don't have the book, you could probably even look it up and see if your record is featured there. Anyway. I'm sure there's more that I'm not talking about in the Asset Archives, but it's really a great book. It's a great reference book. Every time I open it up, I find, I find, I just start getting lost and just start reading about some new record. But here we're talking about this one, Uba. And this is finally, or interestingly enough, one of the records that's, there's like a very little line about it. So this doesn't get a huge entry and not a really great reaction. But I've been looking for this. It has been reissued. It's out of Canada. And it's, as you can hear, a bit of a can influence, even though it's from 1968. So it's kind of pre can. The drummer is certainly doing a great Jackie Liebesite sort of impression, but um, it's a private press, although it looks like it did have Trans Canada distribution, as it says right there. As you can see here, Les Milieux, les milieux Vendeurs sont toujours sur Canusa. Sur Canusa. Également disponible sur l'étiquette Canusa. At A1. The best sellers are always on Canusa. <laughs> um, yeah, some other titles. But anyway, there's a few different variations on this sleeve, and I believe Gerson did the reissue. Let's, yes, let's open up the asset archives and find out what it says. Okay, Uba. There's so much cool stuff. There's 101 strings thing in here, too? Wow. Uba, out of Quebec, Quebec artist, 1968, West Coast and jazz rock jamming freak out with organ and fuzz. Supposedly the sinners or perhaps some other famous Quebec, uh, Quebecians in disguise, Quebecois. One long track stretched over two sides, that's true, with five minute drum solo on side two. Don't love that part, but that's okay, it's only five minutes. Some scat singing of mostly nonsense lyrics and a general sense of abandon. Although nominally a private press, the label shows the Trans Canada TC logo. I don't have the late record in front of me, but this is the original pressing it. Um, George and Angry Mom uh, found a copy, and this is his downgrade, although the record's totally near mint, but this sleeve has some ring wear. So the, yeah, there's not really much known about this at all. I've looked up, no one really knows who the band members were. There's some idea that they might have been tied to uh, Jean-Paul Massiera's um, Les, uh, Les Maledictus Sound some of those same artists but it was only you know pressing Canada sort of obscure clearly a jam session nonsense lyrics I love this sort of organ that's up front I'll try to do a closer excerpt of this but what you're listening to is indeed Uba <laughs> There's really not much else that you can say about this, which is kind of the cool thing about those asset archives. A lot of times there's just no info. It's done by musicians who probably forgot they even did it. Totally lost for time. Although this one is not that rare. They list it as a three rarity. The, the rarity system in here is like a one through five. Five being super rare, one being not so rare. This is a three and it's not that pricey. I mean, it used to be more in demand, but as you can hear, it does get pretty freaky. Gets pretty unhinged. There's, there's definitely, you could see a kind of can resemblance. Although, like I said, this is like when can was just forming. This, this was around. Uh, probably never played live or anything. It's probably just a studio got booked and these guys turned up and just started going, oh bah, oh bah, oh bah. But I love the feel of this. It's sort of like, feels like it could have been like a 60s jam band, but these guys were way 
on the outside. <laughs> These guys are on the outer fringes. And yeah, they were from Quebec, so. Uba, self-titled. The A1 label, but really it's a Trans-Canada distribution. So I'll try to talk more about the Asset Archives more as I do these, but it's a great Bible, it's a great book, it's a great read, some really good descriptions of records. They talk about, like, they feature stuff they don't like that gets hyped. Um, some obvious stuff is in here, like I said, but it's just full of treasures. And let's just flip open to a, to a page and see what I get. I found the Invaders. But let's read this one. No, let's read the Invaders as I landed on. 1967 on Justice. Does anyone have the Invaders? There's probably like 30 Invaders bands. A uh, pretty standard garage frat party fair. Backed by horns, the focus was on popular pop and soul covers such as Midnight Hour, Double Shot, and Shotgun. At least one reviewer has deemed the album unlistenable, but to our ears, their ragged, haphazard performances are a big part of the charm. And that's why it's in the Asset Archives. Check out the lumbering cover of Summertime and the more enthusiastic and taken cover of Knock on Wood. Personal favorite is the What's the Next Note guitar solo on Hold On. There it is. A lost guitar player. That's Asset Archives type stuff. That said, the set's highlights came from the pair of band originals. Have you ever and Just for Kicks? There's actually two different reviewers on this, Lundborg and um, the other guy. Anyway, it's listed as a two rarity originally on the Justice label. On the right track is the name of the LP by the Invaders. Anyway, Acid Archives, Diaries, The New Project, Uba. I'm going to try to do one of these a couple times a month. Anyone wants to join in, join in, please. I know there's plenty of, this is a fertile ground that we can tap into as a collective VC. And the goal maybe is somewhere, somewhere down the line to have every single record reviewed on YouTube by the VC. Who knows? I don't expect it, but we'll see. Reissues or not, originals preferred, of course. Reissues are great. Join in, and I hope you dug that. Until next time.